Let's take a look at how to export the three main data files needed to start training. After opening Noah's ZRT Maya file, Noah's rig asset will appear in the center of the screen. Within the outliner, you'll notice multiple groupings, the joint hierarchy, neutral Noah mesh, and rig curves. If you scrub or play the timeline, Noah begins performing the wiggle ROM motions. To start the export process, you'll first need to export the neutral character mesh object. Begin by selecting the root joint and geometry within the outliner. From here, you will export the data by selecting the file dropdown and clicking export selection. It's important to note that all four inputs are enabled in the include options section. You'll also want skin to be enabled within the deformed models section. Because this is a neutral character, you won't need any animations, so it can be left unchecked. Make sure FBX export is selected within the file type, name the file neutral character or any desired name, and click export selection. We'll follow the same steps for exporting the training poses. For the poses, you'll only need to select the root joint. When exporting, make sure the animations are enabled as your joints will include the wiggle ROM necessary for high quality training results. Lastly, we'll export the training shapes in Scalar Alembic. Expand the model group and select the character geometry. Select the cache dropdown, Alembic cache, and export selection to Alembic. Name the file and click Export Selection. With the three main data files exported, you can continue on to the next step of this tutorial, which includes importing the data into the trainer. With the trainer open and the necessary training data exported, we can begin importing the data into the trainer. To start the export process, First, we'll access the character dropdown and click Load FBX. Click Browse and select the neutral character FBX file. From here, you can click OK. Loading the FBX file can take some time, but once it's done, you can click OK on the character information pop-up. You'll also notice that Noah appears in the middle of the scene view. Next, we'll import the skeleton animation. Select the training data dropdown and click load animations of skeleton slash extra parameters. From here, we'll select the skeleton animation and click open. Once the animation is imported, it'll appear in the table view below. If you want to add more animations, you'll need to select a different row in the table where the animations will be overridden. You can also check if the animation has successfully imported by scrubbing through the timeline. After the joint animations have been successfully imported, we can then import the mesh animations. Select the training dropdown and click Load Animations of Mesh slash Scalars. Select the Mesh Animation file. A simple way to make sure the data is properly imported is to toggle between the Show ABC and Skinned. Show ABC hides the Alembic Mesh animation data, while Show Skinned hides the Neutral Mesh and Skeleton data. The three main training data is imported into the trainer, you can continue on to the next step of the tutorial, which includes generating and loading maps for better training results. High quality maps are crucial for high quality training results. There are many different maps to create for improving the training quality. The two recommended maps to include in your training data are joint impact and patch maps. We'll look at how to generate these maps within the trainer, as well as how to import maps created by hand. To start the map generation process, we'll begin by creating impact maps. Select the impacts dropdown and click Generate from Wiggle ROM animation. We'll leave the default settings within the impact map generation pop-up box. So if you're interested to learn more about the settings, you can navigate through the Wiggle ROM documentation section. With the default selected, click OK. Joint Impact Maps generated pop-up box will appear detailing information in regards to the generation process. You can click OK. 
Next, we'll generate the patch map, which is similar to the process to impact maps. Start by selecting the patches dropdown and then generate from vertex positions and impact maps. It's worth noting for the patch map generation process to be successful, impact maps need to be generated or imported first. Instead of leaving the parameters in their default state, change the vertex position weight to zero and the impact map weight to one. The outcome of these settings is a better patch map generation result as the trainer relies on the impact map weights that were previously generated. Depending on the desired results, you can also set these parameters to a mixed setting. There's also a patch map section in the documentation if you're interested to learn more. Next, click OK. With the patch map successfully generated, a pop-up will appear detailing the number of patches. Click OK. You'll also notice the patches are now overlaid on your asset within the scene view. This patch map window allows you to edit the patches by painting or looking at different visualizations of the patch map. You can also visualize the impact maps by selecting the Quick Select dropdown and selecting Joint Impact Maps. You'll need to navigate through the Joints ticker to see the different impact areas. For high quality training results, we recommend hand editing the maps, which can take multiple iterations of training. We've instead provided high quality maps for you to import with the NOAA asset. To start the importation process, you'll first select the Impacts dropdown and click Load.zrt Joint Impact Maps. Navigate to and select the Data.zrt Joint Impact Maps file. The process is similar for importing patch maps. Select the Patches dropdown and click Load.zrt Patch Map. With the recommended map set up, you can continue on to the next step of the tutorial, which includes training the Ziva rig. With the required training data and recommended maps set up, you can begin the process of training a Ziva RT rig. Start by selecting the rig drop down menu and click Train. A pop up window will appear with multiple options for rigging. We'll keep the settings in their default state. If you're interested in the individual settings, feel free to read the training parameter documentation within the references section. With the settings left in their default state, Click Train. You'll be presented with a training pop up window detailing the successful training information. Click OK. We'll need to save the train data for use within a player. Select the rig drop down and click Save ZRT slash ZIF. Browse to the desirable location. With the training complete, we can view the results by toggling the Show ZRT checkbox within the Asset Table View. With the training data saved, you can continue on to the next step of the tutorial, which includes importing the trained Ziva RT asset back into Maya. With Maya open, we can begin the process of setting up the Ziva RT player. To start, you'll need to enable the Ziva RT Maya plugin. To do so, select the Windows dropdown, go to Settings and Preferences, and click Plugin Manager. Click Browse at the bottom of the window and navigate to the ZRT Maya Player.mll file. Select it and click Open. At the top of the plugin window, search for ZRT. The import was successful, you'll see the Maya ZRT Player plugin. Make sure it's enabled. With the plugin enabled, import the NOAA asset rig. We can use the neutral character we previously exported. Within the outliner, select both the mesh and joints. We'll add the necessary Ziva Player configurations using Ziva's Python command. First, open the scripting window by selecting the Windows dropdown. General Editors, and click Script Editors. Lastly, type or copy and paste the short script provided within the description of this tutorial. To check if the Python script successfully configured the Ziva RT asset, you can select the mesh and find the Ziva RT player input. 
Now that we know the player is set up properly, you can continue animating your asset while running Zivar Artis deformation simultaneously.